This is cattail, close up. Um, this is one of my favorite vegetables. This is a supermarket of the swamps, <laughs> as Ewell Gibbons said. And if you haven't read any of Ewell's books, read them. He is such a great writer. He's so entertaining. He has so many good stories, even if, even if you don't try any of the recipes, which are full of sugar and fats and stuff, but still, mm -hmm. he's a wonderful writer. And he called this a supermarket of the swamps. And you want some, Dougie? Yeah. <laughs> What's well, interesting, I had a cat um, with no tail. And later on, this mm -hmm. comes into a flower, and it looks like corn on the cob, and you peel it. So I was peeling the, the flower of the cattail and just putting the peelings on the ground, and my cat, who had no tail, grabbed the peelings and ate them. So I always said that she always wanted a cat tail and so she got one. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself because at this time of year, what I like to do is peel this. And you know, this is, I feel that this is a New England version of aloe vera. Hmm. It's really got that stickiness that aloe mm -hmm. does. If anyone would want to just feel it. Yeah. See how it feels yeah, mucilaginous. It's yeah. just like aloe. Sorry. And I place, but... believe that the Native Americans use this for burns. Mm. Oops. Mm. Want to stick it. Mm. So it's mm. it's a nice sticky. Yeah. Um, anyway, I keep peeling. This is getting a little bit late now, but a little earlier, this bottom part of the cattail, I'm just going to peel it down. It has a beautiful inside very soft area that's called they call it cossack asparagus and if you want to try it it's very nice there's a little in our salad just get that part that is very soft <laughs> have you tasted it before that might be a little bit high up just take a little bit you want to try a little bit we can see. Does anybody, uh, yeah. anybody want to try it? What, what flavor does it ta uh, taste like? I think cucumber. Yeah. That's what I would say. Yes. Cucumber. cucumber. Right at the bottom, this taste. I love, to, I love to put it in my salads. Like two weeks ago, I was putting this in my salads, and people were saying, well, where did you get the cucumber? And I said, well, I just actually went out and bought some cucumber. I just don't want to get it too up here. It's too chewy. So this is really a good thing in early spring when it's, you can use it, just eat it just like that, put it in your salads, or what I do when earlier, when it's maybe two, three weeks earlier, I grab some of this, chop it up finely, and mix it in with um, daylily uh, shoots that are small at that point, and some wild onions or ramps. Just a lot of these spring foods, or if I'm lucky enough to get some morel mushrooms, I'll mix that in with it too. So this can be eaten uncooked or cooked. And this one, some people go and get the rhizomes of the cattail. I'm too lazy. These parts are up, uh, the above ground parts, there are plenty of them for me to get so that I don't have to go wandering and getting sunk in the swamp. So I'll just take these top parts, but those parts can be used too. And every there's so much that you can use this plant for. The seed heads that are brown, they've got all that fluff, and you can stuff pillows with them. And you can use them as tinder, you can use this as weaving to weave uh, baskets. This is just such an amazing plant. Well, now this is putting its energy into producing a flower. And most people don't even know that the cattail has a flower, but it does. It has a, it just has a long stalk, and it's covered with leaves. So that makes it even harder to see that there's anything resembling a flower. When we think of flower, we think of, you know, pretty petals and stuff. It doesn't have that. It just has two thin pencil-like things, let's say, like that. Mm -hmm. The bottom one is the female, and the top one is the, the male. And sometimes there's a, a piece of stem in between, and covering those two parts are the leaves. So what you have to do is be very observant and look to see if you can find a stalk coming up that looks like it's got a kind of a little bulge, and, and there's the two parts of the flower. And then what you can do is you peel back the 
leaves from the two, the male and the female. And what I go after is the male part. The female is the part that eventually ends up turning to be that brown sausage-like thing. Mm. But the male is there to fertilize the female. So that's why he's there. But before he does that, we can come along, get the young male, peel off the stem, the, the leaves off of the, the male. And then you can cook it for about two minutes in just a little water and eat it just like corn on the cob. Mm. Take a little butter, just roll it in butter, and, mm. and it has an inedible inside, a little core, so that you don't want to eat. But the mayo is, is delicious. It tastes mm. just like corn on the cob. Mm. And I go into much more detail in my uh, movie, on my spring movie, about how to do, to collect more of the males and make a, a casserole out of them. Um, they're not ready yet. In Northampton, where I'm from, they're just starting to, to appear. And again, just like a lot of the wild foods, they're here today, but gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really Johnny on the spot to, to <laughs> keep up. Thank you. More pines. See, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that later, too. But anyway, if you don't eat the male, and you let the male just do his thing and pollinate, sure. it creates a beautiful yellow pollen. And the pollen is so fine and so bright, yellow. And what I do is when the pollen is ready, I come along with a plastic container or a milk jug and just take the head of the cattail and go like this and just let the pollen go in. And it's just, it'll go everywhere. And usually after I finish collecting pollen, I'm all covered with yellow. <laughs> so I look like I've been putting some makeup on or whatever. But it's very, very fine, a very, very fine powder. I come home and I sift that powder and put that powder in the freezer because it is, uh, it will just get rotty and if you just keep it in the refrigerator. But I add it to when I make pancakes. I add a little bit of the pollen and it makes a beautiful bright yellow color. Or if I'm just making um, something with flour, cookies or whatever, I'll add a little bit of pollen into it. And it's just so beautiful. And one time I had a friend and she was from California and she was always into making her face up. And I said, well, you know, I've got this incredible powder that you might want to try. <laughs> and she said, okay. And so I, I showed her some of the cattail pollen. She put it right over on her eyes. And it looks so nice. It really <laughs> looked nice. And, you know, when the pollen falls on me, it just has that, it, there's a coolness to it. It has a, a really a magical feel. And I was, a, I was an art teacher for many, many years. And... I was always looking for inspiration, and one night I had a dream about the cattail pollen. And the, it was incredible. It was, I was in the middle of a cattail patch, and the pollen was yellow, but it was also turquoise. And it was all around me, and it was coming on my face and hands. And I did a drawing of that, uh, that dream. And then about two years later, my husband, who was a, a collector of Native American art, mentioned to me, he said, you know, that drawing that you did it was about the cattail pollen. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, I just read about, I think it was the, uh, well, maybe it was the Navajo Indians or a tribe out west. They had a ceremony, a pollen ceremony for when a girl reached puberty, that they would cover her hair, her head in pollen. And it was a match. It was part of their ceremony. So I thought, wow, you know, I must have tuned into that in my dream. So. It's, this is one of my favorite plants, and as you can see, I've been just talking maybe too much about it. So we should get moving so we can actually say that we went on a walk <laughs> and not on a stop. <laughs> but that's the problem. When I go on a walk, I tend to stop, talk, and then we move.